New York City wouldn't be what it is today without the sand and gravel on Long Island. You wouldn't have been able to make the concrete that has built the city. Historically, buildings were dug in the city, material was disposed of, and those trucks hauled sand back into the city to rebuild you know, the infrastructure and the buildings and the roads and the bridges and the airports. That was the, the cycle. Long Island, Nassau County, Suffolk County is uh, scarred by remnants of sand mining. In the late 80s, they realized that the landfills on Long Island were contaminating the groundwater and they shut the landfills down. They used to dump concrete on the South Shore of Long Island, ride a boat all through the Great South Bay and just see broken concrete all over the shoreline. It was legal, doesn't make it right. In the 90s, we started recycling concrete, but we produced more of it than we reuse. The idea of the circular economy is that rather than garbage being brought to a disposal facility like a landfill, the material stays in the economy by being recycled and reused. Nine, ten trips to Europe, Amsterdam, Norway, UK, we realized that we could take natural fill and we could bring it into our facility and we could wash it and we could produce a high quality C33 concrete stand. So anything from concrete, asphalt, other building materials, our Recycling Corp can take that in and repurpose it. So rather than trying to get rid of it and lose it, now it's something precious to us. I'd rather be here not mining natural resources, taking excavated soil from construction sites, from houses, from pools. Once that material is removed, it needs to go somewhere. Rock Tech trucks come in, Scenic will load the Rock Tech trucks with the excavated or demoed material. Rock Tech will then transport that material out to the wash plant on Eastern Long Island. So the, the fill material goes into the hopper, the hopper feeds into a screen deck, the screen deck's sized down to, you know, whether it's three quarter, three eighths, it's all washed, the stone, the sand, it's processed out onto multiple conveyors and separated. We use the trap rock up in East Haven as our coarse aggregate. We'll be able to barge from Connecticut with crushed natural aggregate into New York. Here on a weekly basis, we probably take over a thousand ton of each material that helps us produce three to six hundred yards of concrete a day. The number of landfills in the United States is declining, so if we can preserve that landfill space for stuff that really needs to go into a landfill, that allows us to keep those landfills operating for longer and we don't have to build new landfills in other places. So the idea that Rock Tech has, keeping material in the circular economy, creates jobs, it reduces greenhouse gas emissions, and it means less truck traffic on the road on the interstates. Everything is logistics. How do I get the best stuff the closest to where I need it? Trucking with 20-ton payloads out to Pennsylvania, burning diesel fuel, beating up the roads, beating up the bridges, traffic, if 40 to 60 percent of that material that's getting trucked out of state can be a valuable aggregate, then we just take 80 percent of the trucks off the road. It lowers the carbon footprint for the whole city, let alone just the one building. We have some of the most productive and efficient vehicle combinations in North America, possibly the world. So we thought out of the box and, and we've done that. We've worked with some Canadian trailer manufacturers, some other equipment manufacturers, and we've really optimized what we can do to move our product, burning the least amount of diesel fuel with the least amount of man hours. If a regular truck in New York City is carrying 10 or 11 yards of concrete and we're carrying 16, you need a third less trucks. A lot of the C&D material generated in New York City gets processed at transfer stations in low-income neighborhoods, often known as environmental justice communities. These are often in Brooklyn, Southeast Queens, and the South Bronx. If you live in one of those neighborhoods, you see a lot of trucks going down your street. They're noisy, sometimes they're polluting, they raise safety issues, and they contribute to greenhouse gas emissions. So the more we can reduce the number of trucks going to transfer stations in these communities, the better we make the quality of life for the people who live in those communities. I think C&D waste is the next frontier for innovation in solid waste management. We don't want to be running 20-year-old trucks or fly-by-night facilities. We want to operate modern solid waste and recycling infrastructure that is 21st century. This technology is the only way that we're going to continue to be able to sustain and rebuild for the future. We need to all get on the same page. We need to put our heads together and we need to solve problems. 
We need the regulators to see that the next generation, this new technology, can be done right. We need people to come to Al Recycling, to come to Cyrus, to come to East Haven Trap Rock, to come to these facilities. Let this be a model to what everything should be. What we've been doing is okay, but we need to do more. We need to change hearts and minds.